Folks, if you are aspiring to satisfy your customers, then you are aspiring to mediocrity. And I say that because study after study has shown that satisfied customers defect all the time. They just leave. So if you want to derive competitive advantage from the customer experience you deliver, it is not enough to merely satisfy your customers. You must impress them. You must leave an indelible impression in their minds that is going to cultivate the repurchase and referral behavior that is the lifeblood of any thriving business. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how to accomplish that. Many organizations, they debate endlessly, what is it going to cost us to deliver a better customer experience? But the more appropriate question might be, what is it going to cost us if we don't? What great companies recognize is that they're not just in the business of shaping people's experiences, they're in the business of shaping people's memories. Indeed, I would argue how people remember their experience with your business is even more important than the experience itself. Customer experience at its heart is really an exercise in shaping people's perceptions and sculpting their memories. So the goal here is to create experiences that people don't just enjoy in the moment, but also remember fondly long into the future. But a great customer experience and the internal ecosystem that supports it can actually be pretty tough to replicate, yet can accord tremendous strategic and economic advantage to a firm. And what I would tell you about these companies is that the impression that they leave on their customers does not happen by accident. It is very deliberate, very intentional, and I would submit to you that it is a consequence of them all dipping into the same time-tested set of principles for shaping their interactions with customers. And today, I'm actually gonna pull the curtain back on some of those principles and get you to start thinking about how you can apply them within your own business. No matter what job you possess, no matter what title you hold, I would argue that there are just two roles within your organization. And they are, you're either serving the customer or you are serving someone else who does. Period. That's it. Sometimes the customer might be an individual consumer. Sometimes in your business, a B2B business, it's an institution. Sometimes the customer might be an internal one. It could be a colleague just down the hall or on the next Zoom call. Sometimes your customer is your direct reports, your team. The very things that foster engagement between a customer and a company are not all that different than the things that foster engagement between an employee and a leader. And because of all of those parallels, the fact of the matter is that the 12 principles can be applied to great effect to the employee audience, not just the customer audience. And my counsel to you and your teams is merely this. There is nothing stopping you and your staff from embracing the same approach as that Ritz-Carlton hotel manager. And by that, I mean demonstrating exceptional ownership and accountability for every customer need that comes to your attention, recovery or otherwise, and thinking not just about the mechanics, the logistics of the experience you're delivering, but thinking in terms of how can I make my customer feel special? because that makes all the difference.